Hello, I am Paul Harris, America's editor at Mining Journal, and welcome to this Mining Journal exclusive with mining entrepreneur Rod McEwen, who's also chief shareholder of McEwen Mining. Good afternoon, Rob. Hi, Paul. Good to see, good to see you. Likewise. Um, McEwen Mining has had a, a difficult couple of years. Uh, while your peers have been making hay in the sunshine of high gold prices, you've had to sort of replow your fields, so to speak. Um, what, what was the best and the worst of 2020 for you? And what are you looking forward to particularly this year? Well, let me see. Um, let's go with the worst. <laughs> um, we, our operations didn't deliver on guidance. So there was great disappointment in the market and by myself. Um, we had taken on debt and that was pressuring us to meet the covenants. Um, so those are the worst two parts. Um, in 19, we had a fire and a flood and a <laughs> increased taxes. And, that, and then I guess COVID interrupted the revenue stream as well and threatened uh, our employees with illness. Um, so we stopped for a while. The good was exploration results in at our Black Fox complex up in Timmins. Um, there were some good drill results. We're, we have a number of properties in the Timmins area that we're bringing together in terms of a concept and we can see our way to that particular production unit doing um, 100 to 150,000 ounces um, and having a, a long life. Um, this year, uh, 2021, we've been driving uh, ramps down to our Froome deposit, which will be uh, extending the life of the Black Fox mine. Um, and we expect to be in ore or at the ore um, at the beginning of um, the second quarter and in commercial production by the fourth quarter. That it's a just a straight decline, a 5% degree slope. So um, easy transportation, a new ore body that uh, is more um, disseminated and should lend to lower cost of operation. It'll give us about two and a half years. And by that time, we expect to have bring resources in at our stock complex, which is about 40 kilometers away. And that uh, we expect to be, that would be our next source of production. And we're, we're doing quite a bit of drilling there right now to prove up a resource. Okay, I, I wanna get a bit more into the assets a, a little bit later on. Yes, of um, course. But um, you know, in, in your corporate presentation, you said that um, you know, your two bad decisions were hiring the wrong operator, you've replaced the operator and, and financing with debt. Um, and you mentioned uh, about the covenants and some of the strain that that caused. Um, if you could have that time again, how would you seek to have financed the project or what would have been, you think, a better way to have financed? It would have, it would have been better to have done an equity financing and taken the dilution at that point than taking on the debt. Uh, we had counted on gold bar coming on stream as planned. Uh, it was projected in the feasibility study. That didn't occur. And Black Fox had a number of non-recurring events that uh, in 2019, our revenue shortfall was $70 million. And so that put us into a difficult position with respect to the covenants on the debt. And we had to go in and finance a couple of times at inopportune points, price points. So okay. yes, it would have been getting, uh, taking equity, um, and have, being very certain of the cash flow we are going to get before taking on debt. Okay, well, uh, as a result of those things, the, the company's balance sheet uh, took a pounding over the past couple of years, um, lower production, um, higher production costs, uh, lower expected income, as you mentioned, um, which obviously saw your cash and working capital suffer. And so you've had to do a, a couple of equity raises, um, which have you know, increased your the shares outstanding of the company by about 50% over the last 18 months. And as, as, as part of that, your own personal shareholding has fallen from, uh, I think about 25% to about 18% now. Um, 
are, are things under control now? Are you coming out of that? Is the balance sheet now able to sustain the business going forward? Yes, is the short answer. Uh, the, the most recent issue was to complete the funding for the Froome deposit, allowing that to come on stream. And it was also to address um, a going concern qualification that our auditors put in and to meet the debt covenants. We refinanced our debt this year, pushing the maturity date out two years, but it came with a couple of more covenants. So we wanted to be uh, in a position where we addressed all of those concerns. Okay, now, now talking a bit about the assets, um, have, have you rightened the ship at Gold Bar and, and Black Fox? Are, are things now in, in a good position? At, at Gold Bar, the next two years, um, let's say that the ship is getting righted. Uh, there's a large amount of waste material that has to be moved or non-mineralized material that has to be moved before we get into the ore. So I would think gold bar is going to be close to a break even in terms of uh, cash requirements. Um, and then we get into the ore body. As you might recall, we took a large write down earlier this year um, when the uh, independent geologist we used to calculate the resource came back a year after we'd built and said, oh, it's different. It's the model, they're different the geological different model. controls. Yeah. So we've spent all of this year drilling, trying to get a good sense of what the resource was or is. And um, it seems that we were probably, our accountants were a little aggressive in writing off uh, to the extent they did that resource. So there was a reduction of about 16%. But rather than having an ore body, that is just one large ore body. It's separated by uh, into two pits now. Okay, and you have a, a feasibility coming out on Gold Bar soon, I understand. Yes, that's correct, in, in this quarter. Uh, we'll also have a feasibility out shortly on our Phoenix project in Mexico. Uh, Black Fox is performing on target right now and that's a mine that's always intrigued me. It's had a short life when we bought it. It had a lot of high grade hits and getting on top of grade control and dilution has always been one of the top priorities. And with Froome going into production, we're gonna be able to spend time drilling off and having a better sense of what's in black box. Okay, um, referring again to your corporate presentation, you've got a, a good slide there that shows the, the turnaround that you anticipate um, happening. Last year, total production was about uh, just over 115,000 ounces, um, obviously, obviously evidencing the, the hits that the business took. And this year you've guided 140 to 160,000 ounces, and then with growth in 2022 to over 200,000 ounces, and then again in 2023 to about 300,000 ounces. So it seems you're you're now on the upward climb, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. It's it's reflecting the uh, production coming out of Froom, the improvement at at Gold Bar, and production in Mexico. Okay, um, that's obviously um, you know great news, and I imagine long long overdue great news for you. Um, to what extent do you think, or how long do you think uh, MUX will stay in the penalty box in terms of the market and and investors? We have to put together um, three or four good quarters, I believe, before the market's going to embrace us. Um, there. There's some events in between that might accelerate that acceptance. Um, one, people might be looking at it and say, well, relative to much of our peers, we're uh, significantly lower. So th the upside is greater uh, if this turnaround is executed properly. Um, secondly, we have, um, we're moving the concept uh, at Black Fox, that Fox complex coming on stream. Uh, once people get us able to appreciate what we're doing there and what we've found, 
Um, in the Timmins district, we have 300 million ounces of gold resources, 3 million ounces. So there's a, there's a base for a good life there. Um, we're doing more drilling around Gold Bar. Uh, we have adjoining property we call Tonkin, and it has um, about several hundred thousand ounces of oxide ore that we're looking to incorporate into Gold Bar. Um, Mexico's coming along. And with the copper price improving, interest in Los Azulis, our large copper deposit, is definitely attracting attention again. Uh, the PEA or preliminary economic assessment projected a very robust 36-year um, um, mine life and low cost. So we're, we've been looking, we're following two tracks right now. One is look for a joint venture partner to develop it. And the other is um, spinning it out into a separate company uh, while retaining a, a good interest in it and funding it to go forward. Okay, well, uh, there's been a, a handful of um, copper IPOs recently, and they seem to be very well received. So that would seem to be a, a, a very logical step to take in um, keeping uh, perhaps McEwen Mining as, as the gold company and Newco as the copper company. They seem to have a lot of logic there. Um, and to what extent would you look to sort of, you know, really strengthen the balance sheet, perhaps um, generating some, some cash from Los Azules to really solidify the balance sheet? Well, doing a spin out, I've, we're looking at an IPO plus a secondary. So okay. there'd be money going into the new co uh, and into our treasury. Um, so we'd be satisfying both. We'd be able to have the funds to advance Los Azules towards a feasibility study, and we'd also be adding to our own treasury. Okay. Um, M&A in the gold sector is starting to heat up. Um, you've obviously been in the, in the business a long time. You've uh, been involved in a number of deals. What, what kind of deals do you think make sense to you in general terms at, at the current time? I'm not just thinking sort of mercury mining here. I mean, as, as you observe the market, what, what sort of consolidation or, or deals make sense? There was premiums being paid for companies up until a, few, a year or so ago. And then there were some big mergers almost at market. Um, when I was running Gold Corp and we bought Wheaton River, we did it for a very small premium. I, I guess we took the social issues out because I said, well, let's put the two companies together and I'll leave. Um, so there was a management team of the, the smaller company that we bought that we're gonna run. Um, I think the industry has to be looking at the shareholders and saying, you know, if you go out and make a large bid, a premium to market, um, it's often not a real value. It's a nominal premium because once you get together, the uh, premium shrinks. And uh, I think if people can look and say, well, how do we create the greatest value? And often that is just doing it at market um, and let the market go from there, create a stronger company, not weakening one and strengthening the other. I do think you're gonna see more um, just uh, consolidations, regional consolidations, where you can spread GNA over a larger asset base. Okay, thank you. Um, I imagine you would have hoped to have perhaps been in a position to be a more active participant in the, the wave of M&A, given your ultimate goal to make uh, McEwen Mining a Fortune 500 company and, and the, the growth that that, uh, that will entail. Um, you know, is, is it frustrating to have to sit out at the moment or, you know, this is looking like it's going to be a long gold cycle. So will your time come later on further down the road? It's extremely frustrating to have found myself in the position we're in. Um, there was great opportunity 2015, 16 to be acquiring and we didn't, we, we were tied up. Um, doesn't mean opportunities aren't there. I think there's more, there's still good exploration stories out there attracting attention. There's still more discoveries to be made. Um, that's abundantly clear when you look at the respective cycles 
that have happened and the discoveries that have led to uh, new minds. Uh, no, I, I think there's more room. I'd just like to get our foundation solidly in place and, and a cash flow running, positive cash flow that allows us to, one, develop the assets we have, because I think we have a good asset base, um, clear out some of the, the financial issues that have been uh, holding us back, and then start running. Excellent. Well, I wish you all the best of luck with that, Rob. And I look forward to finding out more about Goldbar when the feasibility study comes out soon. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. And so I'd like to thank Rob McEwen for joining us today. And goodbye from me, Paul Harris. And stay thank tuned you, for more Mining Journal interviews. Thanks, Rob. Cheers.